If you have a Bible, go ahead and open up to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 is where we're going to be for a majority of the day today. We're going to jump around a little bit. Uh, And the title of my message today is God, I'm Ready. God, I'm ready. And I'll go ahead and, and kind of lead you there already. Um, my desire is that each of us, and, and really my hope and my prayer coming into this weekend, is that we would each be able to leave with that being on our lips, that being on our heart, that being on our mind, that God, I am ready. Romans chapter 1. Beginning in verse 1, I'm going to read uh, 15 verses here just to frame it from the beginning and then we'll jump in. It says this, Romans chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Through him, we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are called of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. I'm making request, if by some means, now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. That is, and that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith of both you and me. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I have often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also. Just as among the other Gentiles, I am a debtor, both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. So as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. So as much as is in me, I'm ready. Everybody say, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. Let's pray, and then we'll jump in. God, I thank you so much for your presence. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're here. Thank you that you're, you're here because you desire to speak to each and every one of us. And God, I am, I am aware today that that no matter our reason for being here, you have a different and specific reason that you desired each and every one of us to be here, that you're here to meet with us. God, we love you. Our hearts are opened, our eyes are open. And God, my prayer today, our prayer today is that we would leave a little bit different than when we came in. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Hey, what is your most ridiculous pet peeve? Like the one that at this point in your life you would probably submit is a little outlandish, is a little unnecessary, but you've kind of, you've held on to it for far too long and you've kind of determined that's the hill you're going to die on, maybe in your marriage, maybe in your relationships, and you're like, I got to, like that pet peeve. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, For me, I'll go first. Um, Mine is, mine is, uh, has to do with the toothpaste and um, I, I don't know if uh, you probably don't do this because it's it's ridiculous. Um, my wife has a tendency, bless her heart, she is amazing. Um, she has a tendency, I think she just likes to do things with me. And so sometimes she just makes things more difficult than they need to be so that I'm like involved in it with her. But um, she, she has this thing she does with the toothpaste every night and every morning. And every time she uses it is she will just like choke the top of the toothpaste. You know what I'm talking about? And like she'll squeeze it just to get the last little bit that's at the top. Meanwhile, the entire toothpaste is there at the bottom right there for her to just like squeeze up. And everybody's looking at me like, are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. In fact, we talk about it almost every day that I'm like, why can't you just like push it from the bottom? 
And then the, the worst way, she'll just leave it that way, right? She'll just like choke it up at the top and then like set it over there. Like, like that is how a normal human should do this. And like that's setting it up for me to be able to then use the toothpaste after. You know, maybe, maybe you grew up and you roll it, you know? Maybe like at grandma's house, there's a chip clip on the bottom of it. But either way, we all know you don't choke the top of the toothpaste. That's, that's not, just doesn't work that way. Another one of my pet peeves is movie theaters. Yes, the actual theater. I don't like them. I, I'd, prefer, uh, I'd prefer to watch a movie at my house. I, I know that, I know that you know, some movies are better off in movie theaters, but when you go, everybody's talking all the time, right? No matter what, somebody still has a phone on and something happens. The food is better at home anyways. The bathroom is better proximity to where I am. Like Everything's better watching a movie at home, pet peeve is going to the movies. And, and one, one, of the, one of my new pet peeves that I've started to develop and, and kind of, um, I promise we're getting somewhere with this, okay? One of, one of my new pet peeves that I've started to kind of develop and realize that I have is uh, I hate uh, the interviews of losing athletes after the game. Anybody else with me? Like that interview is the exact same. Right? They're like, oh, you know. And, and one of the questions is always like, what do you think you could have done better to like not have this outcome? They're like, uh, play better? Win? I don't know. Like, they, they, they don't know what to say. They're, you know, and, and one, of, one of the responses that, that I've heard more and more frequently, and I, I would encourage you to, to lean in and, and, and hear this the next time you're watching a sporting event, uh, and it drives me insane, is was that when an athlete at the end of the game says, you know what, I, I, guess we just, I guess we just really didn't show up ready to play today. And you're like, are you kidding me? I paid money for this game. <laughs> like, I paid, I was ready for you to play. How come you weren't ready? What about, what else do you need to be ready? You have your jersey on, your shoes are tied, the lights are on, what else do you need, you know? And you're like, how are you not, I paid money for this, I, I'd spent hours of my day to come and watch you play or watch it on TV even, and, and you're not ready? Are you kidding me? Ready? And it drives me crazy. But then I wonder how many days have I gone in my life where I've woken up, gone through my day, gone to bed only to realize I really didn't show up ready to play today. I really didn't wake up with the mindset that I was ready for God to use me, ready for him to speak to me, ready for him to lead me and guide me today. And I wonder, is that the same for you? Are you ready? How would you answer that question? In fact, last night, somebody just yelled out, no, you know, and I was like, appreciate your participation. Um, <laughs> kind of caught me off guard, but, but, but are, are, you, are you ready? Like, if you were to truly think about where you're at in life, are you ready? And maybe a better question to ask as a follow-up to that is what determines whether or not you're ready? Now, some of you are sitting there, ready for what? And the reality is, is anything. Because if I've learned anything in my time following Jesus is that every day is a new day. That as scripture says, his mercies are new every morning. That he has good things set aside for you and for me to do. That there are ways that he desires to use you, to speak to you. That you're, you're not at your job by coincidence. You don't go to the grocery store at that time by coincidence. No, God desires to use you and work through you. And even at your home with your kids, like there are things that God desires for you to do. But so often we define readiness based on my goodness, don't I? So often in life, are, are, are you ready, right? What do we normally do? When, when somebody says, hey, are you ready for that next job? You would say, well, I've led teams in this way. I've, I've performed at this level. Here are my numbers. Here is my track record. And therefore, I believe I'm ready. The only problem with that is that doesn't quite translate to normal life, does it? Because you go through challenges every single, every single day even. You go through challenges all the time. We go through difficulty. I make mistakes daily. And if my determination of whether or not I'm ready to step into what God has for me or if I'm ready to do what God is asking me to do is based on my goodness, I will never actually get started. For some of us, our readiness is based on our weaknesses. 
We, we, we've convinced ourselves that I'm not ready to serve God. I'm not ready to follow God with, with, uh, uh, with intention, with, with focus. I'm not ready to take that step that God's asking me to take because I, I just, I've got a lot of mess I got to clean up first. As if that's how this works. As if God doesn't know that already before he called you. As if he, that God didn't know that already before he set aside good things for you to do in advance. No, like some of us, we base our readiness on, on our goodness, our resume, our weaknesses, or our deficiencies. But, but my encouragement to you today is that readiness is actually a choice. That readiness is a choice. Here in Romans chapter 1 and verse 15, Paul is, is writing to a, to a Roman church from Corinth. Now you got to understand that, that Romans is one of Paul's longest and most significant books that he will ever write. One of the most significant letters that he will ever pen. But it comes at a time when there is a lot of division and tension in a church in Rome. In fact, many of the Jewish believers have been kicked out of Rome in previous years, and it is around this time that they are all being welcomed back into Rome some years later. And they come back, and, all of, uh, and, and now we're bringing people from all of these different parts of the world, and, and beliefs and traditions have changed, and they come back and they realize that, that some of the ways they had worshipped God in the past are not the same anymore, that, there are, that, that traditions have been let go of, and other traditions have been erected, and, and different things, they're, they're worshipping differently, and there's, there's disunity in a church, and Paul writes to them to unify them and, and to remind them of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus. Paul has made an attempt to get to Rome many, many, many a times. We'll find in, in the book of Acts that, that in an effort to get to Rome, he's actually shipwrecked. That there are times that the enemy has kind of got in the way. He's been bitten by a snake. That God has actually redirected his steps on a path to Rome because some other churches had needs that he, he chose Paul and Paul was ready to go and to do what God asked him to do and to preach. And, but it's in Romans chapter 1 and verse 15 that Paul so, says, So with as much as is in me, I am ready to preach to you who are in Rome. Though not there, he decides in his heart, I'm ready and will do whatever I can, however I need to, in order to advance the gospel there in Rome, that I am ready, I am choosing to be ready. In fact, the word used in this Romans chapter 1 and verse 15, that actually there, there are two words that are translated ready in the New Testament, one of which means prepared, but that's not the one that is used here in Romans chapter 1 and verse 15. The, the word that is used here in Romans chapter 1 and verse 15 uh, is, is, is used, and it's translated this, eager excited with a ready mind that it's actually a mindset that Paul has it's a determination not based on my circumstances or what is happening in my life not based on what has gotten in front of me not based on the challenges that I'm facing but I am ready because I have chosen in my heart and in my mind that I will be ready when God asks that I will be ready when God calls and for some of us today, there are some things that God has been asking you to do for a while now. There are maybe some, maybe some things that, God, that you know God has put on your heart. The Holy Spirit has been wooing you and leading you to do, but, but you have been made, making excuse after excuse after excuse of, as to why you're not ready to do that thing. And God is saying, hey, I, I get that you don't feel ready. I, I'm just asking if you would decide today to be ready and I'll take care of the rest. I will lead you, I will guide you, I will comfort you, I will care for you along the way because what you, what you find is that God's not asking you to get ready, he's asking you to choose to be ready. Will you just choose to be ready to do life with me? To be ready. For some of us, we said, hey, I, I, can't, I can't forgive quite yet because I've gotta, I've gotta work on some things and I've gotta get through some things and though it, though it hurt and though that happened, God's saying, hey, will you, will you Will you choose today? I am the one that heals your heart. I am the one that leads you. I am the one that comforts you. But I don't, I don't want any longer for this bitterness, this anger, this frustration to, to hold you captive any longer. So will you choose to forgive today and let me take care of the rest? 
For some, you, you, you know that there's a conversation that you need to have, that, that the Holy Spirit has been, has been leading you to have for a long time now, but you have, have continued to throw things in the way that say, no, I'm not ready yet. I, I got to get ready first. And God's saying, I'm not asking you to get ready. I will take care of it. I will fill in the gaps. I will fill in your weaknesses. And I will actually be the one that, that leads through your strengths. Just choose today to be ready. God's not asking you to get ready. He's asking you to be ready. Because here's the reality. Oftentimes, our effort to get ready, ready hinders our ability to be ready for what he wants to do when he wants to do it. Let me prove it to you. Luke chapter 9 and verse 57, it says this. Now it happened as they journeyed along the road that someone said to him, said to Jesus, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to, uh, uh, and Jesus said to him, foxes have holes. And then he said to him, uh, and then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow you, but first, watch, look at this again, but let, for, let me first go and bid them farewell who are in my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And the reality is, is that you won't get ready until you first decide to be ready. Readiness is a choice. Paul is saying in Romans 1.15 that no matter what comes my way, I'm choosing to be ready when God is. I'm choosing to be ready in this season of my life. Scripture will tell us that we're to be ready in season and out of season to give an account for this person that we love and we follow and that we believe in. And Paul says, you know what, I'm choosing to be ready. I've had a shipwreck come my way. I've been bitten by a snake and God has led me in a different direction. But I am choosing today to be ready to preach to you that are in Rome and I will find a way to do so. God's got some things in your life that he is asking for you to choose to be ready to do. For some of you in this place, you know what it is. For others, the choice to be ready is actually the choice once and for all to say yes to Jesus. Say, you know what, I, God, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna continue to attempt to get my life right and to do all of this stuff to be good enough. I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose today to be ready to give my life to you and trust that you're gonna take care of the rest. You wanna know what's interesting is, is this is scripture, Romans 1, 15, but it's as if Facebook has read this. It's as if Facebook understands this. Because it, I, I don't know if you pay too much attention. Recently, I've been kind of going through how like businesses and startups kind of get started. And there's this podcast I've been listening to. And, and what's interesting is that Facebook is actually found one of their fundamental beliefs, one of their fundamental mottos as a company from the very beginning was this. Mark Zuckerberg installed this motto that said, we move fast and we break things. That we're not waiting for things to be perfect before we release them. We're going to release them and we learn along the way. That if we wait too long, if we wait till something is perfect to do it, if we wait till all of the conditions are right, till we've got everything figured out, by the time we release it, it's going to be too late. Somebody's already done it. Facebook understand that, that if I'm going to get out there, if I'm going to make an impact, if I'm going to go do something, I have to choose today to be ready before I ever feel ready. Before I ever feel like everything is buttoned up, I'm going to choose to be ready. Second thing is this, is it's interesting is that readiness is not the result of your preparation. I don't know if you know this, but readiness is not the result of your preparation. Readiness is the conviction that comes from total submission to the Lord. What do I mean by that? It means this, that no matter how much you prepare, God's the one that holds tomorrow in his hand, not yours. What's interesting in Romans 1.15, Paul doesn't give his resume leading up to when he says, so with as much as is in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to the Romans. He gives God's resume. He begins to say, the one who has come down, the one who's the fulfillment, the one we've been waiting for, him, Jesus, has called me, has separated me. I have received his grace and therefore I come to you to show you that you can, you have, and he begins to outline God's, God's resume. 
that there's a conviction that comes up in him based on him submitting his life to Jesus that says, I, I, I've got I've to go, I've got to do something. God, you've got something for me. That if we, if we look at Paul's life up until this point, he's had some great moments and he's had some dark moments as well. The guy who used to kill the very people he's trying to disciple and lead now. Guy who used to kill Christians, used to seek them out and find them. Now is one of the biggest advocates for the gospel and is going around trying to disciple those who profess Jesus. You see that Paul says, you know what? What I need is not what I can do or have produced. What I need is to know that he's with me, that he's called me, and that there's something he has for me to do. And that is all that it takes for me to be ready to do what God's asked me to do. That's the only thing. It's not about what I can do in advance. It's not about all of the things that I, I, I can muster up. It's not about my skill I can develop, though great. I'm just telling you that you will live a life of sanctification. Sanctification is not a day. It is a process. What does that mean? It is the growing into the likeness of who Jesus is. You're going to live your entire life doing that. So if you sit and wait and say, hey, God, I, I, hold on. Let me go prepare first. Let me go get some things in order. Let me go take care of what I need to take care of. Let me grow a little bit before I say yes to you. You're going to be doing that forever. But God has a divine appointment waiting for you at lunch today. And he's saying, hey, will you be ready? Will you just choose to be ready for what I want to do in and through you today? Hey, I, I know you've got to go to the grocery store later tonight for the week. Will you choose to be ready for what I have for you today? Because I've got some things that I want to orchestrate. I've got some ways that I want to speak through you. Will you choose to be ready? See, Paul, Paul has a conviction that comes from his revelation, not his preparation. And there's three things that we see that he, uh, there's three things that we see in this, in this first 15 verses, and that's this. Paul has a revelation of the harvest. Paul obviously has a revelation that there is a harvest out there and that the workers are few, as scripture says. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 37. Then he, Jesus, says to his disciples, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. See, so how do you know that? Well, Paul strategically chose Rome. Rome was a place that Paul strategically chose because of its central hub to every other city and its path to Spain. Paul ultimately, in order to advance the gospel, desired to get to a place where he could have the most impact possible. That was his desire. And though some things had gotten in his way, he never wavered from, I know that there is a harvest out there and I want to do everything I possibly can to be a part of advancing that. So I'm going to go to Rome because I know that it is a central hub. I know that people are coming from everywhere. And so if I can just get there, Paul had a revelation so much so that despite the circumstances that came against him, he found a way to get there anyway. Though I can't be there in person, I'll write a letter. Though, though I can't quite stand in front of you, and though I've sent people ahead of me, I'm going to write a letter. That way, if I never make it, the gospel still does. The interesting thing is the amount of, the amount of scholars, the amount of, the amount of theologians, the amount of Christian historical figures that have come to know Jesus because of Paul's words in Rome are astonishing. And to this day, we are still being discipled and grown and seen the true person of Jesus and the gospel through what Paul, what Paul wrote. He had, he had a revelation of the harvest and it caused him to have this conviction in his heart that said, I, I, you know what, I, I'm ready. God, whatever it is. The harvest, yes, I'm ready. Whatever it is. Join a build team, yes. Do life together in a, in a group, yes. God, go to this place, yes. Give this thing, yes. Sacrifice in this area? Absolutely, because the harvest is plentiful and I want to be a part of it. Second revelation that Paul had is Paul, Paul had a revelation of who he was 
in Christ. Look at Romans chapter 1, verse 1 through 7. It says this, Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God. Called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he promised through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace. One of the revelations that Paul got, obviously, from Romans chapter 1, that led to his ability to say, you know what, I'm ready, is that he knew what God had said about it. Now, I'm not going to belabor this too much because Preston went through about 35 different things that God says about you, and you can go back on YouTube and watch that for yourself. He's going to say it better than I can anyways. But Paul got a revelation of, of what God said about him, of, of, of how God talked about him, that he was called, that he was separated unto the gospel, that he was a recipient of God's grace. And with that revelation, it birthed this conviction in his heart that said, you know what? If God's called me, if God's given me a new way to live life, if I know that his grace is on my life, I, I'm ready. What do you want to do, God? What is it that you want to do in and through me? And I wonder today, do we have that revelation? Have we gotten that? Have we truly allowed that to sink into our heart and into our mind and move us to action? What's interesting is, is, is if you look at the letters that Paul will write throughout, throughout the New Testament, and, and Romans is, is actually one of his latter letters that, that he writes towards the latter half of his life. Um, what's interesting in, is in a majority of the letters that Paul writes, he starts off with the same greeting. And what I think is interesting about that is Paul obviously knows something that we sometimes struggle to remember. And that is this, that there are days you don't feel called. You don't feel separated. You don't feel like God's grace is on your life. You don't feel like he is with you and he is. And Paul said, you know what I got to do? I've learned that I need to accept what he says. I need to rehearse what he's said about me. And I need to walk in it every single day of my life. That there are days I maybe don't feel like it, but I'm going to remind my soul about it once again. I'm called. I'm separated. What does that mean? It means that there is a new way of doing life. Before Jesus, there was this old patterns. There were these old ways that you conformed to. But as Romans 12 tells us, tells us, do not conform to the patterns of this world any longer, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Understand that there is a new way a new way that leads to life. Jesus will say, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I am the new way that you have been separated unto. This new way of doing life. You don't have to abide by the old patterns anymore. There's a new way to do life and it is following me. And Paul understood that and it birthed the conviction in him. And the last revelation that he had was this, that God was with him. That God was with him. We know this because just a few chapters later in Romans chapter eight, Paul will say this. Look at how powerful this statement is. God was with him. It birthed a conviction in him to be ready for what God wanted to do in him and through him at all times, no matter his circumstances. It says this, Romans 8, for I am persuaded. You understand the implications of just those few words right there. It means that I've doubted before. It means that there, have been, there, was, there was a time when I didn't truly believe this. There have been seasons of my life where I felt alone. There have been moments where I didn't feel like God was necessarily with me, that it's been difficult for me to understand. But you know what? Over the course of my life, there have been too many moments and I have been persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other thing nor, nor any other created thing nor shipwreck, no snake bite, no nothing could shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul understood that his withness, yes, I made that word up, his withness, God's withness in his life was not based on his worthiness, but his word. God wasn't with Paul because he was worthy of his presence. God was with Paul because he promised he would be. God is with you today, hear me, because he promised he would be. 
God has good things set aside for you in advance to do and desires that you walk in them. And he wants you to know today that he's with you. So you can go into that job with confidence. You can go into that conversation with confidence. You can forgive that person with confidence, not in of yourself, but knowing that no matter what, even though you don't feel like it, God is with me. And so I'd rather that. And no matter what, I'm going where he goes. This is what Moses said. When the, when the Spirit of the Lord comes to him and calls him, he says, I ain't going anywhere unless you go. God says, all right. Like, like do, you understand, do you understand the implications of God's witness in your life? That because he is with you, you ought to and can be ready for literally anything. No matter the epidemic, no matter the challenge, no matter the work situation, no matter the home situation, you can be ready for anything, not in and of yourself, but because you know and have a revelation of God's witness in your life. Do you understand that he is with you by choice and he's with you always? His witness is not based on your worthiness. It's based on his word. Matthew 28 and verse 20, Jesus speaking to his disciples after he says, go into all the world. He, said, he says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, and here's the promise. Jesus says, hey, you know what? Go and do this for me. Here's the mission. Here's the calling that I have on your life. Go and do it. And how can you do it? Why are you able to do this? Because of this one promise. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. It's like when you're a child and, and the trash can is at the end, of the, the end of the driveway and you're told to go take the trash out in the middle of the night, at, late at night, and it's dark and you're 10, but you want to feel like you're 30, and, but you're scared, and you don't want anybody to know. And so you ask mom or dad to stand on the patio, and all of a sudden, there's a confidence that is birthed in you that you could literally, like, you could do anything just because mom or dad is watching you from the patio. If you knew and truly got a revelation today that God was with you, what would it cause you to be ready for in your life? What is the thing that you have convinced yourself, you have tried to delay, you have tried to make an excuse not to be ready for? God, God, I know you want me to do that. I know you desire for me to do that, but, but let me go and do a couple of these things first. Let me take care of this. Let me do this. And God is saying, if you would just understand that I'm with you, what would it cause you to be ready to do? Conversation. Again, many, many of us even here, maybe maybe doing life together with someone else and sharing your hurts and your experiences and your hopes and your dreams and who your heroes are and your heartbreaks is, is not something that you have ever really truly done, but you know in your soul that you need to do it, that you want to do it, but you, you've convinced yourself that you're not ready to. I'm just telling you, like, could it be that if you understood God was truly with you, what he said about you, that you'd say, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna choose today to do life with somebody else. I need to. My soul needs it. Choose to be ready. And the last thing is this, and it's interesting, but I'm gonna get through this. Readiness provokes innovation. Readiness provokes innovation. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it kind of how I like wanted to say it, but I didn't know, I wasn't confident enough to put it on the screen, but I'm gonna say it anyways, so I don't know why. But readiness is the Holy Spirit's playground in your life. And I don't mean that in any way to diminish the power or the person of the Holy Spirit. What I mean is that I, I truly believe that when you say, Holy Spirit, I am ready. God, I am ready for whatever it is. I think the Holy Spirit gets excited. I think he starts, I think he starts dancing around thinking of, man, I, as Scripture says in Ephesians 2.10 that, 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 that you've been called and that there are good things that he has set aside in advance for you to do. He's like, oh, we're going to get to do that now man, there's this person in their life and I, I've, been, I've been so excited, so ready. So I've been so ready. I've been waiting for you to decide to be ready. I, I, I wanna love on them. I wanna care for them. I wanna give to them. I wanna help them and I wanna use you to do it. And I've just been waiting for you to say, you know what, I'm ready. And so now, ooh, I'm excited. Here's, here's what we're gonna do. Are you ready? Here's what we're gonna do. I, I want you to go to the grocery store and I want you to do this. And I think when you say, you know what, God, I'm ready. And even when you don't even feel like it, when you just say, Holy Spirit, I am ready, I think he gets excited because he knows that there are some things that he would like to partner with you on in your life that until this point, he maybe hasn't been able to as much because he's not a God to force himself on you. He is a God of invitation. 
inviting you to be ready to to see what he sees, to do what he desires to do in and through you. Romans 1 verse 15, so with as much as is in me. Hear me, he has tried to get to Rome his whole life. And whether it was the enemy or God, something has gotten in his way the entire time. And he says, you know what? No longer. I'm choosing to be ready. God, my gifts are yours. My talents are yours. My weaknesses are yours. My deficiencies are yours. You need to understand that there is nothing that is better off in your hands than in his. And Paul says, you know what, God? With as much as is in me, this is what I've wanted to do, and I am ready. And so you know what? Then he begins to notice. Hold on. I've written letters before. So what if, what if I never actually make it? What can I do? I'll write a letter, and I'm going to send it ahead. And let's see what God could do. Interestingly, when Paul does finally make it to Rome, he'll make it there in prison. But how amazing is it that he, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, wrote ahead that this hub, this central hub, might get the gospel, be united together so that the message of Jesus could be advanced across the world. God's not waiting for you to get ready. He's asking for you today to decide to be ready because there's some things he's excited to partner with you on and he's just waiting for you. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? You know, one of the things that I've noticed about just following Jesus is that there are times when, you know, I, I, I can get really good at telling God I'm ready in a couple areas of my life and leaving a couple areas out also. God, I don't think I'm ready in this area to do that. I'm not ready for that conversation, but I'm, I'm ready over here. My prayer today is that you would decide to submit it all to him and say, you know what, God? Come hell or high water, come whatever the circumstances, no matter what, I am, I'm ready. I'm ready. Because I understand it's a choice. God, would you give us a greater revelation of your words over our life, of your presence in our life? You've got good things for us. And God, would it compel us to decide today to be ready? What is it that God is asking you to be ready for today? Is it a conversation? Is it forgiveness? Is it finally getting the help that you know you need, but you just haven't been able to take the steps yet? You've been telling yourself you've got to do X, Y, Z, and then you'll be ready. And God says, just be ready because I am. Is there a person in your life that God has put on your heart to help, to serve, to sacrifice for, to love, to care for? For some of you today, I believe truly that today, your decision of readiness is to say, God, I am saying yes to you for the first time. I'm submitting my life to you. I'm ready. I'm ready for this life to not be on my shoulders. I'm ready to just follow you and watch you do so much in and through me. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would show us. Show us today. Is today the day that we need to finally be ready to join a team, to get involved, to understand that the harvest is great and I want to be a part of what you're doing. It's today the day where we say, you know what, going into this new year, I'm not going to do life by myself anymore. No matter what I have to do, I am choosing to be ready to do life together with people that God has strategically placed in my life. I'm ready. I don't feel like it, but I'm deciding to be ready. Is it to forgive? Is it to help? And some of you today, with your head bowed and your eyes closed, you have been exhausted because you've tried and things haven't gone your way. You've been disappointed because you've stepped out. You've done something similar to Paul and your ship has been wrecked. You've been bitten by a snake. You have, everything has happened. But hear me, Paul got a revelation that God was with him, what God said about him and that the harvest was great. And so he decided, no matter what has happened, 
Today, I choose to be ready. Today is the day of the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. Today, today, today. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your leading. Show us today, Holy Spirit, what it is that you desire to do. Thank you, God, for the good works that you have set aside in advance for us to do and the ways that you have been so patient with us. Today, would you hear our heart and would our response be, God, I'm ready. For what? For anything. I just want to be with you. In Jesus' name, amen.